Drop-down lists are a great way to add a touch of interactive flavor to your spreadsheets. They're not only nice to look at, but they could come a really long way in making sure that you don't commit data entry errors. They're easy to create and can be tailored to your needs using a wide array of functions and formulas. In this video, let's learn how to create and edit drop-down lists. So you can drop them like it's hot. Make sure you stay until the end of the video for some bonus tips and tricks. The simplest way of going about creating your drop-down list is by selecting the cell or cells you want to have a drop-down list in and by heading over to the Data tab and clicking on Data Validation. In the Settings tab of the Data Validation window, in the Allow field, select List from the drop-down. A source field shows up at the bottom. This is where you input the choices that you want to appear in your drop-down list. You can input the values manually by typing them in, but keeping note to separate them using a comma. Once you press OK, the drop-down arrow appears beside the cell or cells that you selected earlier, and you'll see your values in the drop-down list in the order that you put them in. Alternatively, you can input a cell range in the source field. This opens up a ton of possibilities for our drop-down lists because we can now integrate functions and formulas, adding an edge of automation to them. We head over to Data, Data Validation, Allow List, and in the source, instead of manually inputting them down, I'm going to click and drag on the list that I have so it picks up the values in that cell range. As you can see here, it's got the cell references in absolute references. Click OK, and we have our grocery items in the drop-down list. But what if we add new items to the list? We can see that it doesn't show up in the drop-down, so you'd have to repeat the entire process, which is a bit of a hassle. What we could do is turn this string of data into a table. We're not going to go into detail about tables in this video, but they are basically excellent ways of automating processes that involve sets of data. So to turn this data set into a table, we're going to select a cell that's within the data set. Then we're going to go to insert, then table. You could also use the keyboard shortcut Control T. This pop-up appears and if your table does have headers, you might want to tick that checkbox and click OK. As you can see, it automatically formatted the table for us which is neat, but if that's not your thing, you can select any part of the table and head over to the Table Design tab and change your table styles here. As we can see, the header row is formatted differently. And that is because we ticked that checkbox asking if our table has headers. Going back to the topic, now that we have a table, we can use that as a reference for our drop-down list. But we cannot reference our table column in the data validation window directly. But we can use the indirect function to help us out. In the source field, input equals indirect, open parenthesis, double quotes, then the table name. Add an open bracket, the column header, in this case items, and close bracket, double quotes, and close parenthesis. Click OK and you have your list here. Suppose we add two additional items below the last line of data in the table and we can see our drop-down list updating. If we remove entries though, we'll see empty blanks in our drop-down list. All we have to do to fix this is to adjust our table accordingly. Now we've got the drop-down list created. In case you want to edit them, simply select the cell or cells that have the drop-down list 
and go again into data then data validation and you can change their settings or parameters here or you can even remove the data validation by selecting allow any value if you've got office 365 then you might have heard of spill functions these allow for a great deal of automation and ease of use for our drop down lists let me run you through some quick ways dynamic arrays or spill functions could up your drop down list game suppose your data set contains values that repeat this will be a pain should you create a drop down list as we can see here as we created this drop down list in the normal way we have repeating values in the list which kind of defeats the purpose of having a drop down list in the first place you could easily retain the values for your drop down list using the unique function. Simply type in equals unique, then the array of your dataset. The function automatically spills over the cells below it, so make sure you don't put any values under it, lest you get a hash spill error. The function gives you the unique values in a dataset. Suppose again, you want to have your values in your dropdown list to be sorted alphabetically as well. You can include the sort function before the unique function so that the end result will be sorted alphabetically by default. Referencing this for your drop down list is also easier than referencing the table. In the data validation window, in the source field, input the cell reference of your spill function. And at the end, we can tell Excel that we want to reference the entire spill area by putting in a number sign or a hashtag as the kids call it after the cell reference after we press ok we'll see our drop down list has the unique values of the table the best part is that it's all automatic so whenever we add new data entries to the table whether they're duplicates or unique the spill function would pick it up and sort it automatically there's loads of stuff you could do with dynamic array formulas to spice up your drop-down lists. Leila Gurani has some excellent tutorials on using spill functions to create search boxes out of drop-down lists. We'll be linking that in the video description down below. Got any tips of your own? Make sure to leave them in the comments down below. Make sure you're subscribed to Simple Sheets for more Excel content. And leave a like on this video if you found this video useful. And I'll see you guys on the next one.